you know, in this Christian walk that we've chosen, we go through changes. Things happen, like she was saying, that you go through winter, spring, uh, summer, and fall. All these changes happen to you. You know, you become this little baby in Christ, you know, drinking on that milk. But then you keep growing up, growing up, until you start getting to that meat. And you start really understanding about who Jesus is. And, and what he means to you, and how he works in your life, and, and what it means to give yourself away to him. And to be all his. And to really, to walk this thing out, this Christian life that we've chosen, what it really means to be holy. Because the scripture says, be holy for I am holy. Yeah. That's a commandment from God. We are to be holy because he is holy. And it's hard, you know, it's, it's hard to grow because this world just doesn't want you to receive that, the spirit of God. You know, the, the ruler of this world is the devil himself. And if he can keep you from serving Jesus, that's what he'll do. If you can keep just being that babe in Christ and just being satisfied with the milk and just being glad to accept that he saved you for your forgiveness of your sins, the devil's happy if you just stay there. But when you grow, like you understood Smith said, you start winning souls and you start speaking that word and the old man starts falling off and you're not doing the things that you used to do, that you used to be out there, drugs, alcohol, fornicating, whatever it was, just being a mess. Being that stuff that we know as Christians, as believers in Christ, that we should not be. Amen. The devil is really happy if he can keep you there and not and keep that old man or old woman on you. Amen. So it's not to me. It's not surprising that there's only a few of you here tonight yeah. because the word I'm coming out of is Romans. Come on, now you know Romans. When you get to Romans and you really start, there's some heavy stuff in Romans. Yeah. You want to really learn how to walk this Christian life out. Romans is the book. Romans is, is some heavy stuff where you would have to be spiritually minded to understand what it means to walk this thing out. And uh, we're going to start in, in Romans chapter 6 is going to be our starting point. And then we're going to let the Holy Spirit have his way. Uh, so let's just a moment of prayer real quick before we get started. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time of fellowship, Lord God. Thank you. Father, I, I praise you for your word, Lord God, that we have a manual to get us through this yes. Christian walk, Lord God. That you didn't leave us just to figure it out for ourselves, Lord. But you give us instructions, Lord God, specific instructions. Lord God, you reveal everything that we will go through in this walk. You have already revealed it to us in your word, Lord God. It is just up to us to open the word and seek the answers out. Seek out your instructions. Uh, obey your commandments, as you said, Lord Jesus. They will know this. You are my disciples, but if you love each other, yes. and if you love me, obey my commandments. That's your word, Lord. That's your word, and that is what we are to do. So, Lord God, we just ask that you open up our minds tonight, Lord God. Just open up our spiritual mind, Lord God, that spirit mind, to hear what you're saying to us this night, Lord God, and to strengthen us and encourage us, Lord God, and to put this word in our heart and to walk this thing out, Lord Jesus. For we have each chosen to serve you, to follow you, to submit to you, and we want to be honorable to you, Lord God. We want to present ourselves that living sacrifice, Lord God. Not just the scripture, Lord God. We want to live it. We want to present ourselves to you, Lord God, that living sacrifice. Amen. Hallelujah. So once again, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you have your way. Speak what needs to be spoken tonight and free us. Just free us from whatever is holding us captive. Hallelujah. Just set us free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So Romans 6. And the... Uh, the main point is Romans 6, 11, and it's to reckon yourself dead. Now, in the natural, who, who wants to reckon themselves dead? Who wants to consider themselves, who wants to be dead? None of us want to be dead, right? We want to live. No one, wants, no one says, I'm ready to go to the grave. I mean, we just don't, we're not created that way. We're not built that way. But what is it that we, we have to reckon ourselves dead to? That's the thing. What do we have to reckon ourselves dead to? What is the Lord asking of us? What is he telling us? And there in Romans chapter 6 and verse 11 says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead, indeed unto sin. There is where it's at. To sin, but alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, you've got to be dead to sin but alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. So we gotta just we gotta just reckon ourselves dead to sin. It's just 
When we reckon means that you acknowledge that you just, it's just fact. You just reckon that's what it is. I'm dead to sin. You have to come to that place where you're dead to sin. Where it doesn't even bother you. When it pops up, you, you don't look at it. You don't see it. You don't, you don't hear from it. It's dead to you. It's dead to you. It has no power over you. See, and that's the point that he's trying to get us to. So we're going to go through a couple of points. Um, the first one is, is why. Why should we reckon ourselves dead? Why should we do it? <laughs> the number one answer, because Jesus did it. Jesus, sin was put on him when he came down to earth. But he reckoned himself dead to it. He didn't participate in it. He never sinned. He walked it out. He, he reckoned himself dead to sin. When it came up, and it did come up, the temptation at least part did, but he didn't sin. When Satan came, the temptation came. There was temptation. But Christ did not sin. He wrecked himself dead to it. He's like, I'm not hearing you. Mm -hmm. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. And because the, he knew he had to wreck himself dead to sin so that he could die for our sins. Mm -hmm. You see, because he, if he would have done one sin, yes. it yes. would have been over. Yes. It wouldn't have worked. Mm -hmm. We would have still had to go to that cross ourselves mm -hmm. because we would have been guilty of sin. Mm -hmm. But he did it because he wrecked himself dead to sin. <laughs> So we got to reckon ourselves dead to it, not just forgiven, not just uh, I have grace so I can go on and keep sinning, but no, we have to be dead to it. We can't say, I reckon I'm forgiven of sin so I can go ahead and sin some more. No, this says you have to reckon yourself dead to it so you don't commit it anymore. Because that's really what happened. Jesus on the cross, he forgave us, but he also gave us the same power that he had. We have it within yes. because he abides in us. And that's another part that we need to understand. Jesus Christ lives in us. His spirit reigns in us. It abides in us, as the word says, abide. It abides in us and it dwells in us. And that's the point that we need to get to. We need to stop thinking in natural terms. We need to come and understand that our Lord God, he, he inhabits yes. this body, this shell, this yes. temple, this church. Yes. We need to get to that point. Yes. And stop walking around like we're just uh, natural beings having a spiritual experience because that's not the case. We're spiritual beings having that natural experience. We're only here for a short time. We're strangers here. We're visitors here. This is temporary. And that's why we got to be dead to sin. And when you get to that, that point where you know that he's living you and the Holy yeah. Spirit takes over, then you will become dead to sin. It won't even bother you. You'll just turn your head. I don't, I don't see you today. I don't see you today. You, you mean nothing to me. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to get there. Oh, yeah. We're going to get to some it is written. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And, and, and second, in uh, Second Corinthians, let's turn there. Um, second Corinthians 5.21. And, and this is the point that I'm making. You see, it wasn't like, like I always say, and I always love it, that Jesus didn't do anything that, that we're not supposed to do. That he, he didn't do anything that he expects us to do. He didn't say, oh, I expect you to do this, but I didn't do it. No, 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 no. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, The Father God, for he made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. You see, when because Jesus, he knew no sin, and like I said, he didn't sin, but when he went was hanging on the cross, all of our sin, the sin came upon him. That's when he was made sin. And that was the point where God the Father, that's why God the Father had to turn away. That's why when Jesus says, why have you forsaken me? My Lord, my God. Mm -hmm. Eloi, Eloi. Mm -hmm. Because you see, God can't have nothing to do with sin. Not even when it was upon his own son. He couldn't. I'm sorry, son, Mimo. I, I can't answer you. I can't help you. I can't speak to you. I mean, he was, God was silent. Father was, and that was the true pain. Mm -hmm. That was why Jesus agonized so much in Gethsemane. Yes, yes. Because of that separation. Mm -hmm. Because when God cannot have nothing to do with sin. Mm -hmm. My God. So it says because he did that for us. Because he did that for us in the, in the second part of that verse. Is that, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Oh, hallelujah. You see, we might become the righteousness of God in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he, he took our sin on that cross. All the nasty, dirty stuff that we are, that we were. He took it on that cross so that we could become the righteousness of God. 
And like I said, just like him, because Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God. Amen. And we have that same power, that yes. same spirit living in us. You, we have that. We are the righteousness of God. Yes. Yes. El Elyon, God most high, the most high God. Oh. Not just any God. <laughs> Not that that's your average God, you know. No, no, the most high God. Hallelujah. And so you see, even, even though Jesus became sin for us, like I said, he was dead to it. And in the end, he died for it. He was dead to it, but in the end, he died for it on that cross so that you and I could be free from it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So yes, he was dead to sin, but he died for it so we could be free from it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we know we're, we're not worthy, but thank you, Lord. You considered us worthy. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, all that sin. Every single sin was, was put on him. He became sin. The Father made his own son sin. Mm. So that we might be righteous. Become the... You see, and that's that word right there. Become. It's a process. We have to become that righteousness so that we might become that righteousness of God. It's a process. It's a process. It's a journey. And not a lot of us are willing to, to go through that journey. And that's why, you know, this book of Romans here, wow. It, it tells you how to go through that journey. But it, it gives you the real talk. It tells you it's going to be tough. There's some things you got to let go of. There's some things you got to let fall away. As Evangelist Smith was saying once again, thank you for that word. Just you got to let some things fall away. Amen. you got to reckon yourself dead to some things in your life. <laughs> Amen. Even including your own thoughts, your own emotions, you got to consider yourself dead to some of those things because some of those things are bad for you. They're not good for you. If you're going to become that righteousness of God, you got to let them fall away. So if we, now we, we read Romans 6, 11. Let's go up to verses 5 and 6. You see, because this, this is the part that people really need to understand. And I know a lot of people don't understand what baptism actually is. But it's, it's Romans 6, so we're still in Romans 6 there, but let's move up to verse 5 and 6. And it says, um, you know, we were baptized into his death and so that we should live in his life. It's pretty much what this is saying. So Romans 6, verses 5 through 6 reads, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly also we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man or woman was crucified with him, Come on, man. that the body of sin might be done away with, okay. that we should no longer be slaves hey, of sin. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We no longer be slaves to sin. Yeah. That's the freedom we really want. Yeah. That's where we want to get to that place. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We want to get there. And see, this is what baptism really symbolizes this. You see, it's just symbolic. The water baptism, when you go down, if you don't understand what it means, when you come up, you're the same person. As our, our Bible professor says, which I love when she says that, um, she says when she got baptized, you know, she was still, she wasn't right with God. You know, so she said she went down a dry devil and came up a wet one. Because that's just, it's just symbolic. You understand? It's just symbolic. But what it actually means, it's symbolic of being dead with Christ. It's symbolic of you being on that cross with Jesus and dying with him there. That's what, when you go down, it's symbolic of you going into that grave with him. When they took him to that tomb. And when they wrapped him up and put him in that, the cloth. And you know, that's what it's symbolic of. When they take you down into that water, that's what you're supposed to be believing. That I'm dying with Christ. I'm dying with Him. But when I come up, ha, hallelujah, I'm being resurrected with Him. Just like on the third day when He rose, that's what it's supposed to, that's what it means. So for those of you that are, have been baptized or are thinking about being baptized, that's what you did. That's what you signed up for when you got baptized. You, you were saying that I died with you, Jesus, and now I live with you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you that I might become the righteousness of God. Oh, hallelujah. You know, and, and once he came up, once he was resurrected, once he was resurrected, all things were possible. Yes. And the same with us. Once you came up out of that water, 
and we're res truly resurrected, all things are possible now. All things are possible. So now, like, again, if I was going to say, this season that you're in now, it's, it's new. It's new. It's ready for you to just walk into it. Walk into it. Hello. Walk into it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Just Woo. walk into it. Hallelujah. Just like when, when Jesus was raised up, he just walked. I'll take this throne right here, Father. Thank you. He just walked right into it. Because that's what it was. That's what it was. There he was on the right hand of God. You know, and he came back to show the disciples, look, this is what's going to happen to you. This is the resurrected body. When he came back and he showed himself to all the disciples to, to show them, this is real. This is real. If you will die for me, then you will live with me. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what baptism is really supposed to be. It's supposed to be you acknowledging that I'm dead. That old man is gone. It's gone. No more. Fell away. <laughs> I now live in Jesus. And guess what? Jesus lives in me. That's hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So you have to put on the new man. You don't understand. And the new man is Jesus Christ. That is the new man. That is the new creation that we have become. We're supposed to be his image. We're supposed to become that, the righteousness of God. And that's the new man. The new man represents Jesus. And we need to take off the old man, which is representative of Adam. You see, Adam is the old man. So we're the end, again, and we, that's why we love our Lord. We love our Father because it's always about choice. He doesn't force us to do anything. It's always about choice. So the question is, who will you obey? The old man, who leads, which leads to death? We know that. Or will you follow the new man, Jesus Christ? Because he leads to life. That new man leads to life. That old man is death. Guaranteed. It's death. There's no getting around there. In, in Romans against 6, and this, this chapter, I encourage you to read the whole chapter later on and just, just really get into it, study it, meditate on it, just, just dig into it. Because, man, it's, it's deep. <laughs> I couldn't stop reading it over and over again. I was just like, man, this is heavy. But it is, it is what we're meant to live. And in Romans against 6, the last verse, verse 23, we all know it. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, I mean, don't fool yourself because remember, you think sometimes we get into this, man, we're, sometimes us Christians are so messed up, you know, we get into this thought of, of I'm sinning, you know, I'm committing sin, but nothing's happening. I'm, I'm still walking, you know, I'm still walking. He didn't strike me dead. You know, there was no, no lightning bolt came out of heaven. No, I didn't, I didn't get caught, so... I'm still ministering, so I, I must be okay. But remember what happened to Adam when God told Adam and Eve, don't eat from it. For in the day you eat from it, you will surely die. Now let me ask you a question, Bible students. Did Adam and Eve die, by the way? Did the lightning bolt come down and strike them dead at, right, as soon as they... Is that what our scripture says? No. They didn't die right away. At least not naturally. Naturally they didn't die right away. But spiritually? Yes. They were dead. Mm -hmm. They were dead. And, and if not right away, day by day, spiritually, they were dying. It was that spiritual death. It was that spiritual death. You see, and, that, and that's how sin can be tricky. Because you don't think, nothing happened to me. You know, I just, I just committed a sin, nothing happened. But it's happening. It's happening to you. You're dying slowly, spiritually. You're dying slowly. And you don't recognize it. Because in the natural, you seem like you're healthy, you're fine, you're, being, you're still being blessed. But in the spiritual, you're, you're dying. You're dying. So, you know, we, we, we can't think like that, that because there's no immediate consequences to our sin that we're not dead. No, you are dead. You are dead. You're dead to Christ. You're dead to Christ because, like we said, God can't be a part of sin. Can't do it. Separation. Can't do it. Not even with his own son. He couldn't do it. He won't do it. There's, I'm just going to make it real simple. God hates sin. I mean, I don't know how else to say. You know, a lot of people won't say it anymore. It's like, oh, well, maybe he's a little bit lenient now. No. My word says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Is he eternal God? Whatever he spoke in his word, he still feels that way. There's no change there. I know a lot of churches are starting to bend now and compromise and, and let things take place and let sin take place because we're supposed to love people. Absolutely we're supposed to love people, but not the sin. That's right now. 
I mean, God loves all of us too, but he can't stand our sin. To him, it's like that, that filthy rag that the scripture talks about. It's just, it's repugnant to him. It's an abomination to him. So we can't fool ourselves thinking that just because there's no immediate consequence to our sin, that we're okay, that we're, we're good with God. Because we're not. We're not. We're dying unto him, really. Instead of, we should be living unto him. But in that, when we sin, we're dying unto him. Slowly but surely. Just like it says, surely you will die. You will. That's what it is written. Surely you will die. Amen. But because, you know, and the other reason why we should reckon ourselves dead is that uh, we belong to God. It's our reasonable service, it says in Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. Paul says, I beseech you, I beg you, I pray you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living See, and I love that right now. See, a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice, not, not that animal that they used to put on the altar and, and offer up to God. No, he doesn't want a dead sacrifice. He wants you to live. He wants you to live. He wants you to be a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Holy. There's that word again because he is holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It's reasonable to be that to God. And verse 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, the renewing, which is ongoing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. See, the point is we're supposed to prove it. We're supposed to prove to the world. That is the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. We're supposed to prove, show the world, this is God's will. Yeah. The way I'm living my life following Jesus Christ, this is God's will. Yes. Not dwelling in my sin, not committing my uh, transgressions. And not looking like the world. Not looking like the world. Not being conformed to the world, not being an imitator of the world, and the scripture says not even being a friend to the world. Because if you consider yourself a friend to the world, you're an enemy to God. Amen. That's what his word says. So you want to go over there and say, oh, I'm going to be the light in the darkness. Oh, no, you're not. No, you're not unless God tells you to go. Remember, you either went where you went or where you sent. So you got to figure that out. You know, where you went, but where you sent there. Did God tell you to go minister to those worldly people, to your past associates? Or are you just hanging out thinking, oh, maybe, you know, maybe just by my example, uh, I got some power. maybe I can influence them, convert them. No, you can't. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Amen. Amen. Say that. Mm. Hallelujah. Only the Holy Spirit can convert someone. Hallelujah. 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 And if you're, I mean, if you're, sometimes that darkness can be overwhelming. If you're that only light, you might give in. You might do some things that you shouldn't be doing. So you got to watch out for that. You got to you got to prove to the world what is a good and acceptable, perfect will of God. You have to present yourself a living sacrifice. So that means every day you sacrifice things that the world looks at you like you're crazy. You know, like why don't you act like like us? You know, <laughs> why don't you look at that bad stuff on the internet and get caught up in all these. Gossip magazines, and why don't you, you know, cackle with us for a little bit of rumor, and why don't you, you know, murmur and complain against the supervisor, and why don't you, why don't you cuss, why don't you drink, why don't you smoke, why don't you, you know, because I serve God, that's why I don't, and I'm supposed to present myself a living sacrifice, so all those things I sacrifice, I give them up, I reckon myself dead to them, I'm not hearing it. I'm not looking at it. I'm not practicing it. I reckon myself dead to it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You see, and I love this renewing, renewing your mind in the spirit. You got to renew your mind in the spirit, not not on your own accord. Thinking, okay, well, I'm going to think good thoughts today. I'm going to think really good thoughts today. That's not going to happen in the spirit. You got to do it in the spirit. You got to say, oh, Holy Spirit, give me some good thoughts today. Give me some holy things to think of today, Holy Spirit. 
you know, clear my mind. Clear my mind, Holy Spirit. But don't think on your own. Don't do it on your own because you, we, it won't happen at all. It'll just a few seconds next thing you know, you're on the freeway and what? You're cursing someone else, right? You're flipping at the bird, right? <laughs> and you just said, oh, shoot. <laughs> I told myself I wasn't going to do those kind of things today. Yeah, you told yourself. Yes. You. That's the problem. You. Me. That's the problem. No, Minister Ramirez, don't. <laughs> you know? Don't say what you're going to do. Say what God is going to do in you and through you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Just have the Holy Spirit just say, take over this place. Yes. Just take over this place, this body, this temple. Please. You know, because you really got to let the Holy Spirit, it's, it's a reset of the mind. It's a reset. You got to reset your mind. That old man mentality thinking, you got to get rid of that. Let the Holy Spirit reset. Hit that reset button. Hmm. <laughs> kind of, you know, the reset button, because you got to change that mindset. <laughs> That, you know, it's that, <laughs> it's that mindset that you got to reset. You, know, you got to reset your mindset. Stay in the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You got to reset your mindset. And you got to put it on Jesus. You got to put your mind on Jesus. Because that's it. You got to set your mind on our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, in, in 1 Peter 4, verses 1 through 2, that's 1 Peter 4, uh, verses 1 through 2. And it, it reads, uh, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, see, there's a lot of suffering in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. That's it. The on, same man. mind. On, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. <coughs> And verse 2 there in 1 Peter chapter 4, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You see how we get back to you being that living sacrifice so you can prove the good and acceptable perfect will of God. That's part of our assignment as a Christian. As a disciple of Christ, yes. is to prove what God yes. says is right. Amen. That God's will is above our will. It's above anything, anybody's will. Amen. It's above anything in the world. We should always seek to do God's will because that's part of our purpose is to prove that to the world. There's so few of us now. You know, and the world, <laughs> the world's not crying over. You know, church is losing membership. The, the world's not crying over people, you know, falling away from serving Christ. The world's not crying over that. The world's actually rejoicing. Oh, good, now we don't have to listen to that anymore. Yeah. We don't have to listen to the truth yeah, all right. anymore. Uh -huh. We can please ourselves. We can, you know, live out this lie that we enjoy so much. My God, help us. Yes. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. Oh, Father God, help us to be that example you've called us to be. Yes. To prove your will, Lord, help us. Help us to prove that will in, this, in these last days. Oh, God. So that's, so that's a couple of reasons why we should reckon ourselves dead to sin. Because Jesus did it, and we were baptized into his death, so we should live in his life. Amen. We should reckon ourselves dead to sin, sin because we have put on the new man being our Lord Jesus Christ yes. and have thrown out the old man being Adam. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And we should bring ourselves dead so that we can prove that good and acceptable perfect will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So now you say, okay, so that's why we should do it, Minister Ramirez, but now how do we do it? How do we do it? You see, and a lot of us, you out there watching the video, you need to know how to do this. You need to, I hope you're taking notes. Okay. Come on, now, Because you need to know this stuff. It, it's what we're called to do. It, it's our instruction manual. Basic instructions before leaving earth, right? That's our Bible, B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. It's what we're supposed to do. We do have work to do, brothers and sisters. <laughs> yes, we do. 
We do. We have a wage to earn. <laughs> we have some labor. Yes. We are to labor for our Lord. So how do we reckon ourselves dead to sin? Okay, well, the number one way is, like I said, you got to pray to the Holy Spirit. Tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you take over these minds. Take over this mind. Take over this heart. These, these thoughts, these emotions. You. You take over my actions. You take over my actions. Because, you see, you have to walk in the Spirit. Every day you have to walk in the Spirit. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to pray for more Holy Spirit in our lives. For more, more, more. Because if you try to fight the sin or the flesh, which are one and the same thing, you see, flesh is just the sinful nature. It's, it's the nature of man without God in your life. That's what the flesh is. And in the flesh, you know, if you fight the flesh with the flesh, it ain't gonna work. it's not going to work. It's not going to work because the flesh is sin. It's this, like I said, it's the sinful nature of life without God. So why would the flesh battle itself? It makes no sense. You're beating up yourself. Why would anyone want to beat up themselves? Why would I want to disagree with myself? And that's why when you try to battle the flesh with the flesh, it won't work. Because the flesh doesn't want to. The flesh is like, we're good living like this. You know, we're good committing sin. We're good being like the world. Everyone else is doing it. What's so wrong? We're good. The flesh isn't going to say, you're wrong. We're wrong. The flesh won't do it because the flesh is in constant conflict with the spirit. It will not submit. It will not surrender. It just won't. Because it wants to go on in that sinful life. It wants to go on obeying Adam and saying Adam was right to disobey. And Adam's my, and you claim the old man Adam as your father, so you say, well, if my father did it, I can do it. If it was good for him, it's good for me. You see, and that's what the flesh does. The flesh says, yeah, you're right. It is good for you. You know, it's like Eve. She saw that it was good for to eat. It was good for food. And that's what the flesh does. The flesh says, it's not that bad. You know, you get some benefits out of it. You know. Right. It's not bad. But we know that if you go down that route, you're dying. You're dying. So, you know, it, it makes no sense. It, it kind of, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at Jesus. The same thing, you know, the same thing how the flesh versus the flesh. It doesn't make no sense to battle the flesh with the flesh. And we go to Matthew chapter 12. And, and this is what happens, right? Jesus is casting out demons. That's Matthew chapter 12. Jesus is casting out demons. And the Pharisees say, Oh man, he cast, he's cast out demons in Satan's name. Uh -huh. What? Jesus, you know, I love our Lord Jesus because he's like, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm casting demons out. And, and, and the, the, the name we're saying there is Beelzebub. So that's Matthew chapter 12, verse 26. And Jesus, who, I, who I'm starting to now call the answerer, you know, Jesus is the answer man. You know, never mind. I know there was a commercial a while back called Shell, the Shell gas station, the answer man. But no, Jesus is the answer man. He's the true answer man. So I call Jesus the answer. In Matthew 12, verse 26, Jesus the answer says, if, if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How, how can, how will his kingdom stand? You people just don't make no sense. Why would someone battle against themselves? Why would someone destroy themselves? Why would someone divide them? Jesus is like scratching his head and saying, you Pharisees, man, you have a lot of knowledge and you know the law back and forth and up and down, but you guys are kind of, man, kind of no common sense. How, why would he be divided against himself? It, it, he would make no progress. And in verse 28 there, if you read, Jesus says, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, ha, huh, Surely, the kingdom of God has come upon you. You see, and that's what we want to be doing. If you operate in the spirit, then surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Surely you are living out that, the, the prayer when it says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Surely the kingdom has come upon you. And then, and then verse 29, Jesus gives us some more, some more wisdom there. Verse 29, or, or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first finds the strong man? 
and then he will plunder his house. See, and the only way you're going to battle sin is through the spirit. Because it is, we know, a spiritual warfare. The only way you're going to battle sin, the only way you're going to battle the devil, is by the spirit. You need to bind it, and the only way you're going to bind it is by the spirit. Like I said, the flesh, you can't bind the flesh with the flesh. You can't bind sin with sin. It, it doesn't work that way. You need, to, you need to walk or operate in the spirit of, of God. And then you will reckon, reckon yourself dead to sin. If you're walking that spirit of God. Because when you're dead to sin, whenever those things of the old man or woman pop up, you'll be dead to them. You know, and this is how I came up with two examples. One for us men, uh, Brother Al and Minister Jones, and then one for the women, Evangelist Smith and Sister Carlotta. I got two examples. So, so the first one for men, right, is, okay, so you see, you see a bowl of fruit. Eh, it's all right. It's good. Eh, I'm not hungry right now, right? That's, that's us. And then next thing you know, you know, you just happen to start smelling someone's barbecuing, right? And you have to, it happens to be your friend. So you go over, you, you smell that barbecue, you look on the grill, and, and man, there's a steak. Nice, it's, it's just, you know, that sizzling sound of the barbecue. It's just that smell, that aroma. And it's just juicy, and then the fat's just melting off of it. You know, and it's that wonderful, you're just like, man, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. You know, what are we going to eat? See, but, but that bowl of fruit, that's how we have to become a sin. That bowl of fruit is like, man. I don't even, you're not even, you're not doing it. It's not doing anything for me. And that's how we have to be like to sin. We have to be like, you're not doing it. I'm not, I don't see you. I'm not hearing you. I don't, you're not doing anything for you. But the things of God, we're like, oh, hallelujah. Yeah, that, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> so, you know, you want to be excited with the things of God. You want to get excited. All right. <laughs> you want to get excited. So now, here's, here's the example for the women. So the women... You, you ladies, here we go. So for men, you know, food, you know, that's just, that's one of the things that, that will do it for us. But, but not for the women. Um, I don't shop. <laughs> Come on, Come on. Uh, but you, <laughs> here we go. So you're out and about, right? You're out and about. Mm -hmm. You walk by the shoe stores. Before the boots, but you know where I'm going, Brother Al. You know where I'm going. She knows where I'm going, Brother Al. All right. I'm in. I'm in. So you see some tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. I don't need tennis shoes. I'll exercise next month. I don't need those tennis shoes right now. I'm not ready to start that program. So tennis shoes, you know, just plain black and white tennis shoes. Whatever. Huh. <laughs> but next thing you know, all of a sudden, your radar, something happens with women. The, ra the radar goes off. Like, whoa, 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 what's going on? What's going on? And there, they, there's some boots. There's some boots on display. Right? You know, I'm going there. There's some boots on the play. You know those boots? The one with that heel? The one with the, the, the zipper up the back? You know, <laughs> come on. The straps? The straps on the side with the gold, with the gold buckle? Then I was just like, oh, <laughs> then next thing you know, next thing you know, those, those pair of boots are in your closet with the other hundred shoes, right? What? <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, I, but that's the way, what I'm saying, you know, what I'm saying here is that just, that's the way though, those things that don't mean anything to you, that don't excite you, that don't, don't bring any enthusiasm to you, that's the way sin has to be to us. We just gotta like walk by five like, oh man, those are, that stuff. But the things of God, Man, I hope we all get excited about that yep. and enthusiastic about that and be like, that, that's what I want. You know, I want that spirit of God inside of me. That's what I want. That sin stuff, I'm, I'm dead to it. Yes. I don't, it doesn't do anything for me anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't do anything for me. I'm dead to it. And, and that's how reckon yourself dead to sin. That's what it should look like. In our daily walk, that's what it should look like. Whenever it pops up, we should be, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, um, let me go with that. It's fine. You know, I should be like, I, it's, I don't need it. I don't need it anymore. I don't, not so much, I don't even need it, but I don't want it. Right. You know, it's like, I don't need it. I don't want it. It's dead. Mm -hmm. The thing is dead to me. It has nothing, no meaning in my life anymore because I serve God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I desire the things. Yes, yes, desire the things of God. And just in case you're wondering, well, what are some of the things 
that I can ask the Holy Spirit to help me think on? Well, it's real easy. The Word of God. It is written. In Philippians 4, verse 8, it is written, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So in your daily prayer, it should be, Holy Spirit, help me meditate on these things. And I would even recommend go ahead and read that scripture. Help me meditate on, on pure things, on, on things that are just, on things that are noble. It, um, help me, Holy Spirit, to just meditate on things that are praiseworthy. If it's praiseworthy, help me to think of those things. And get rid of that other stuff. You know, hallelujah. And it's like another way to another way to reckon yourself dead, as we said, the Holy Spirit, but also God's Word. You gotta be in God's Word. You can't just wait for someone to deliver it to you. You have to be in God's Word. And once again, it is written, and it is really written in Luke 4, verse 4, because Jesus answers Satan. He Jesus, our Lord says, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every utterance or word of God. And that's why we should live. We should live by every word of God. But you're not going to go know what every word of God is if you're not in the word. You won't hear from God. So that's how we got to reckon ourselves dead to sin is by, you know, asking the Holy Spirit to come more and more into our lives by studying his word and just um, by walking in the things of God. Because if you walk in the things of God, the things of the world aren't going to, they, they don't compare. They don't compare to the things of God. Amen. And the third way of how we can reckon ourselves dead to sin is by staying focused on Jesus. You've got to stay focused on Jesus and renew your mind to follow his footsteps a true, and become a true disciple of Christ. In Matthew 8, verse 22, Jesus says to the man, he says, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. You see, brothers and sisters, you are already dead to sin, thanks to Jesus. So don't bother with it anymore because it's, you're dead to it. It's dead. It's dead. Don't mess with dead things. It, just let the dead bury the dead. Let's, let sin deal with sin, but you deal with God. You just focus on God. You, just, you keep focusing on God, and, and that's, you're going to be dead to sin because that's just what happens. The more and more you serve Christ, the less and less you want anything to do with sin. You just reckon yourselves dead to it. So just let the dead bury the dead. If there's people that are just still operating in sin, well, stay away from them. If they're messing with the dead, they're not dead to sin, let them be dead with sin. Like Jesus said, told the man, let the dead bury their dead. Just leave it alone. And then finally, um, in, in the end, you know, we're, each of us individually are responsible to follow Jesus and reckon ourselves dead to sin. We, we cannot do it for you. HG Ministries cannot do it for you. Evangelist Smith cannot do it for you. Minister Ramirez, I can't do it for you. My brothers, my sisters, we all have a word that we can speak to you. We all can pray with you. We all can read the word with you. But we can't reckon you dead to sin. You, that's something you have to do on your own. You have to do that. You have to do that by following Christ, by being full of the Holy Spirit, and by reading his word. So, so that's how you do it. That's how you reckon yourself dead to sin. And the final point for tonight is that, so once, you're, once you understand why you should reckon yourself dead to sin, and you understand how to reckon yourself dead to sin, well now you said, so I've done this, Minister Romero, so now what? So what, what, what do I get out of it? Well, I'm glad you asked. So what's the result of reckoning yourself dead to sin? There's a few things, and really good things too, that you can't get through sin, because remember with sin, you're dying, you're dying. But if you reckon yourself dead to sin, here, here's the result of that. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, you can have life more abundantly. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you reckon yourselves dead to sin, what will start to come out, like I said, after you fill yourself with the Holy Spirit, what starts to happen is you start to develop the fruit of the Spirit. And those things are manifested in your life. You, the world starts to see these, the fruit of the Spirit. They start to see joy in your life, love in your life, peace in your life, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and even self-control. These things are evident in your life when you reckon yourselves dead to sin because you're dead to that. 
And then uh, a few more things here. The result of bringing yourself dead to sin is that you get to save more souls for the kingdom. Woo! You get to help others. You get to tell others how to reckon themselves dead yes. to sin. You know, of course, it's up to them to do it, but at least you have that seed you can sow. Look, I now have, thanks to uh, HG Ministries, you know, thanks to God's Word, we now have the, the pattern, the blueprint, the, the plan of how to reckon yourself dead to sin. And now you can take this Word out and share with them. Mm -hmm. You say, look what it says here. In these few scriptures, this is how you can do it. Because a lot of people think, I can't do it. Oh, yes, you can. You have the power of God. Amen? Amen. So you help them to, to reckon themselves dead to sin. You show them the path. You put them on the path. Hallelujah. Bring those souls into the kingdom. And then the final one, the greatest gift of all, when you reckon yourselves dead to sin, you get eternal life with our Lord right, Jesus Lord. Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it, it's so much better to, to die, reckon yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.